Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka the Venom Vlog. And I'm sorry I haven't had a lot of episodes recently. It's just not a lot of movie news coming out right now, with it being the holidays and everything. So I'll try to, you know, update you guys with some things. I'll try to show off some pictures, uh, whatever I can get my hands on, even if it's uh, older news that we didn't cover. I'll try to do my best. We'll obviously talk about the comics, cartoons, everything like that. And real quickly, I just want to show you two books I got today at the comic store. I went down to Golden Apple, got to say uh, happy holidays to everyone down there. It was nice to have a Wednesday off and go to my normal comic store, because uh, normally on Wednesday, I go to House of Secrets, which is another great comic store here in Burbank, uh, and it's just on my way to work, so it's easy for me to stop by there. But Golden Apple is like the main comic store I go to where I have my pull list at, so it was nice to go in there on a Wednesday, see some familiar faces, and uh, and wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. But I did pick up Venom number one, Venom Inc. number one, I should say, Alpha, and uh, this is just a variant cover. I already have this book, obviously, but I just like the variant cover artwork a lot. And normally, I don't buy variant covers, but this one just looked too good, and I love this artist a lot. So I picked this up today, and it has a digital code so I promise I will give that away in another episode so someone uh, else can have a chance to jump on board this storyline before it ends because it's really fantastic. Uh, if you're out there and you want to read a solid Venom story crossover with Spider-Man and you want anti-Venom and you want all that stuff this book will definitely fulfill your needs in that regard. Uh, and speaking of Venom Inc I picked up issue four today which has uh, Spider-Man uh, by Alex Ross here great cover and he's got looks like he's possessed by the symbiote uh, that uh, that maniac or whatever his name is uh, Lee Price is running around and infecting people and creating a Venom Incorporated army of bad guys and good guys that he can control. And it looks like Spidey uh, gets it and he's under control and he's uh, it's, you know, being angry and, and threatening J. Jonah Jameson there, which uh, secretly probably Peter is okay with on some level, but he ultimately knows it's the wrong thing to do too. So uh, anyway, yeah, I have these two books. Um, at some point, maybe when the story ends, we'll talk about Venom Inc. and we'll get into that, but it'll be a while because I want to talk about Carnage and uh, you know his first appearance and then also Maximum Carnage and then and some other Venom stories as well. Uh, but as always, thank you guys for watching the show. Really appreciate it. And let's get into the next topic. So sadly, I don't have any Venom movies right now. I was looking online, checked Atlanta Filming, checked Marvelous Realm, uh, just checked, uh, you know, Google News, Bing News, like, you know, pretty much every search engine I could. A couple sites are putting up articles, but a lot of them are just playing catch up. They're talking about, you know, whether Michelle Williams is going to be She Venom or not. Or they're gonna, you know, they're talking about that it's, you know, possibly a setup to a Sony shared universe with Silver Sable and Black Hat and all the rumors we heard before and the movies that are apparently in production and stuff. So that's pretty much all I've been hearing right now. So nothing really new, nothing really newsworthy. So I figured let's turn to the comic books. I think a lot of times comic books don't get a lot of press, uh, especially when there's like media uh, tie-ins like movies. You know, um, as someone mentioned the other day, would you like to see a comic book commercial? in front of a movie, uh, do you think that would help sell comic books? And I said, well, it couldn't hurt, I guess. I guess uh, if you're already gonna make a commercial to like, you know, push comics, figure out what, I guess, message you want in the commercial, which comics you want featured, maybe make a couple different ones, do like a, you know, if you're Marvel, do like a Spider-Man commercial that talks about all the spider books like Scarlet Spider, Venom, and Spider-Man, and, uh, and Spectacular Spider-Man. And then maybe over in the other side, do like a Marvel one and do like the Marvel two in one and have like, you know, maybe Miss Marvel or any other characters you want to put in that one. Iron Man, obviously any big staples, Captain America, any of the big guys that are getting movies made of them. And then maybe do like an X-Men one. Uh, and then you could have Deadpool in that one and everything. Uh, that, that would be kind of cool. I think that would probably be worth spending the money for, but I don't know if it would equal sales. And I don't know if a lot of people going to see the movies a lot of times don't care about the comics. They just are moviegoers and they like that these stories are being translated for them and cutting out like the 50, 60 plus years of history and simplifying it for them. And that's what most audiences like. So it'd be interesting to see. I, I wouldn't mind seeing a, a commercial in front of a, a movie for sure for the comics, but that's just because I'm a big old fanboy and, and I, I, I like that kind of stuff. Uh, but as far as the comics go, there is a lot of cool things happening in the Venom comics. Obviously, we've been talking about Venom Inc. We've given away a code in this episode for the latest issue, part four. Um, and then also, there's another crossover coming up with the X-Men and Venom. And I'm really interested in that because Colin Bunn is writing it, and he recently did the Venomverse, not the Edge of Venomverse, I don't think, but he did the Venomverse uh, miniseries, which I thought was really fantastic, where they basically they take Eddie Brock, who's now back in the symbiote in the suit, and they brought him to an alternate reality where everyone's a symbiote and there's a big war going on with the symbiotes in this group called the poisons which are like uh like 
evil symbiotes, I guess, even more evil symbiotes that work as like a hive mind and kind of think together. And they kind of have like crustaceous looking, you know, skin, like the symbiote isn't liquidy on them. It's more like hardened, like, you know, like armor and stuff. And, uh, and they're led by Dr. Doom, who's infected and Thanos, who's infected and like his, you know, guards and stuff. He, even the guardian um, from, uh, from the X-Men books and like the Shi'ar empire. So like, there's all these really great characters and they're fighting against, uh, you know, the symbiotes. And the symbiotes are like Eddie Brock Venom teaming up with uh, Captain America, Steve Rogers. Uh, there's also like, um, I think uh, Wolverine is on the team and Spider-Man, Deadpool's on the team. Uh, there's a really cool, and it's like all Venom versions of them, symbiote versions of them. So it's pretty cool. And that story ended with a cliffhanger. And I guess that story did pretty well and it got the attention of people. So they're going to do a crossover and it's going to be, I think it's, I think it's the poisons are in it, but it's uh, X-Men and Venom teaming up as they're like, because the X-Men team, Colin Bunn's writing, they're going to alternate dimensions. They went to like the dimension where Mutant X took place with Havoc, you know, uh, years ago. It's inside uh, baseball talk for some of you guys. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sorry. Um, and then he, they also went to the X-Men 2099 universe or the 2099 universe. Uh, and now they're going to go into the world where the poisons are and they're bringing Eddie Brock with them, it looks like. So the storyline is going to conclude in March. I picked up previews for Marvel today, and uh, it tells you about the books coming out in March. And you can get your comic book stores to order them. You have till I think, the end of January. So if you go pick up one of these at your local comic shop, you just go to the back here and find what you want, and you let your comic book store know. And, they, and they'll give you the order codes. Underneath the books, there's these ordering codes, so you can always circle stuff, or you just go in and make a nice list for your comic store, or send them an email, however you contact them. Uh, and then you can put these books on your pull list and they'll hold them for you every month and you go pick them up. Uh, and so that's what I plan on doing. I already have Venom on my pull list, but it looks like there's going to be some new titles I'm going to be adding uh, very soon. And we'll talk about those and other stuff because I might do a spinoff to this show about Scarlet Spider, uh, this character back here. I'm a big fan of those, uh, his, uh, a big fan of that character. And the comic book that Peter David's writing right now is phenomenal. And there's a big crossover event with him coming up. So we might do like a spinoff show with Scarlet Spider. Uh, you guys let me know if you care to watch something like that down below. Uh, that might help fill during the weeks where there's not a lot of Venom stuff too. But I didn't realize this. Venom, the movie, is coming out uh, in 2018, and it's the 30th anniversary of Venom. I had no idea that it was actually lined up like that. Uh, May, the month of May in 2018, my birthday, my 36th birthday, uh, is the anniversary of Venom's first appearance. And so what Marvel's doing in March is they're starting to celebrate his anniversary, uh, not just because of his anniversary, but also because the movie's coming out too. So there's this great cross promotion. So I hope we see a lot of other uh, comic book promotional stuff leaking into other media because the comics are certainly trying to promote that other stuff like the movie. So we have here, uh, you see, uh, March is Venom True Believers Month. And they're going to do what they've been doing a lot lately. They just did it with Jean Grey with her return. They're reprinting old issues of these characters, like pivotal moments in their history, for $1. And you can pick all these books up at your local comic shop in March. But make sure you go and tell them to order them so that way you get, a, get your hands on them. There's Web of Spider-Man, number one, and that's with Spider-Man in the black costume right after Secret Wars. You have Amazing Spider-Man 300, the first time he fought Venom with the McFarlane cover. Looks fantastic. Part three of the Carnage story. Normally they put part ones of things uh, when they reprint. But no, they're doing part three on this one. So it's the first battle of Carnage, Spider-Man, and Venom right there that you're going to get for $1. Venom Lethal Protector, which the movie's based off of, for $1. Venom Shiver, uh, $1. That's a story I read recently. You can read my review on it on Goodreads. I'll try to put the link down below. Uh, the uh, Venom Dark Origin, issue three. I think this is the one that dives a little bit more into Eddie Brock's past, shows him as a kid, shows him how, his relationship with his father. Uh, it's a really good issue, so definitely pick that up too. Amazing Spider-Man, uh, I think it was yeah 654.1. It was called Flashpoint, and it was when Flash first becomes Agent Venom. That was when they first revealed that the new Venom was Flash. Then you have Venom number one here by Rick Remender, which is the Flash book. So you have that. You also have, from the same run, uh, Venom number 17, uh, which is reprinted. And it's Toxin. And I believe that's the issue where maybe Eddie Brock becomes Toxin, or it's when, you know, uh, but definitely when Flash fights Toxin. I can't remember who was Toxin in that issue, because there was another guy that was Toxin for a while. But I think this might be the Eddie Brock version. And then the new run, the ones that we've been given the digital codes away from, uh, Venom number one, Homecoming. 
So then you have that. So those are all gonna be available for just a dollar and they come out in comic stores in March. So make sure you go to a local comic shop and you add those to your pull list and let your uh, you know shop owner know that they should order them because that's a really great deal that helps promote the movie and they're only a buck so that you know stores can buy them for a cheap price and then make a little bit of profit off them. Um, not too much, uh, but at least it helps get the word out there. Maybe gets more people interested in the Venom book that's coming out every month, which is actually being pretty good. I really like it. And the fact that he's gonna cross over with the X-Men is just two of my worlds colliding on, on a massive scale. So I definitely will do full reviews of those uh, when they come out, or at least uh, talk about them briefly in Venom videos that we make. And I will give away the digital codes because it looks like the whole crossover, each issue is gonna come with a digital code. So that'll be fun to give those out to you guys. And the dollar comics, I don't think those typically have digital codes in them, but if they do, I'll give them out to you guys. But if not, just go support them. They're only a dollar. Make sure you go talk to your comic store and get them to order those books. And that's enough for me today. So thank you so much for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.